जय Hare Ram, 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna Krishna, Nithai Gaur. Hari Hari Bhagavan Hari Bhagavan Jaya Ghora Nithai, Ghora Nithai, Ghora Nithai, Jaya Ghora Nithai. Ghora Nithai, Prabhu Bhad, Prabhu Bhad, Prabhu Bhad, Jaya Prabhu Bhad. Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Hari 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 Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we're on chapter 9, continuation, verse number 20, the most confidential knowledge. Vidya Mamsa Vapa Putra Papa Yagnar is Vaswagatim Paparta Yante Tapunya Sadia Surrender Lokam Asnati Divyam Diva Deva Bogan Vidya Mamsa Vapa Putra Papa Yagna is Vaswargatim Partha Yante Tapunya Sadhya Surrender Lokam Asnanti Divyam Diva Deva Bogan Travidya Mam Soma Paputra Papa Yagna is Vaswargatim Partha Yante Te punya sadhya surrender lokam Asnati divyam diva deva boghan Yeah, 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 yeah
Raividya, the knower of the three Vedas. <coughs> Mam, me, somapa, drinkers of the soma juice. Puta, purified. Papa, of sins. Yagnai, what sacrifices. Isva, worshipping. Swagatim, Passage to heaven, partayante, pray for, te, they, punyam, pious, asadya, attaining, sura indra, sura indra, of indra, loka, lokam, the world, asnanti, Enjoy, Divyan, Celestial, Divi, in heaven, Deva Bogan, the pleasure of the gods. Here you go, all of those of you who are excited about material happiness, here we go. <laughs> okay. Those who study the Vedas and drink the Soma juice, seeking the heavenly planets, worship me indirectly. Purified of sinful reactions, they take birth on the pious heavenly planets of Indra where they enjoy godly delights. Purport. <laughs> the words Trividya refer to the three Vedas, Sama, Yajur, and Rik. A Brahma who has studied these three Vedas is called Trividi. Anyone who is very much attached to knowledge derived from these three Vedas is respected in society. Unfortunately, there are many great scholars of the Vedas who do not know the ultimate purport of studying them. Therefore, Krishna here declares himself to be the ultimate goal of the three Vedas. Actually, three Vedas, taking shelter under the lotus feet of Krishna and engaged in devotional service to satisfy the Lord. Devotional service begins with the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and side by side trying to understand Krishna in truth. Unfortunately, those who are simply official students of the Vedas become more interested in offering sacrifice to the different demigods like Indra and Chandra. By such endeavor, the worships of different demigods are certainly purified of the contamination of the lower qualities of nature and are thereby elevated to the higher planetary systems or heavenly planets known as Mahaloka, Janaloka, and Tapaloka, etc. Once situated in those higher planetary systems, one can satisfy his senses hundreds and thousands of times better than on this planet. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Not woo, ooh, ah. <laughs> Okay, so what is that verse? Om Gyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Vano Bistam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swampadati Kam 
பண்டேகம் சிகுரோ சிகுதாபதகமலம் சிகுருன் வைஷ்ணவம் ஸ்ரீரூபம் சாகிரிஜாத்தம் சஹகநாத் ரகநாத்தம் விதம் தம் சுஜீவம் சாத்வைத்தம் சர்வதூத்தம் பரிஜனாசிதம் கிருஷ்ணச்சைத்தன்யதம் ஸ்ரீராதாகிருஷ்ணபதம் சஹகனலலிதாஸ்ரீவிஷாக்கம் விதம் நம ஓம் விஷ்ணு பதாய கிருஷ்ணபிரஸ்தாய பூத்தலை ஸ்ரீமக்திவாக்திவராந்தமீ நமனி நமஸ்தை சரஸ்வதி தெய்வே கௌரவாணி பிரச்சாரிணை நிர்விசேஷூன்யவாரி பஸ்யத்தியரை சித்தாரிணை வஞ்சகோபிருபிஷ்ச்சிந்துபேவீதம் பாவனேபியோ வைஷ்ணவேவியோ நமோ நம தப்தகஞ்சனகோரங்கி ராதே விருந்தவனேஸ்வரி விரகபானுசுதிதேவி பிரணமாமி ஹரி பிரியே ஜய ஸ்ரீகிருஷ்ணோச்சோயுத்தோனோபிரபுணுத்தானந்தோய்தாரிவாசிவாசிவாசிவாசிவாசிவாசிவாசிவாசிவாசிவாசிவாசிவாசிவ
uh, elevation to higher planetary systems, such as Swargaloka. Prabhupada mentions Mahaloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka, there's Satya Loka, there is also uh, Swarga, there is also Swargaloka, there is what else? Uh, there's another one that's left out. Mm, Tapaloka, Mahajanaloka. Uh, all these different lokas or different planetary systems as you go higher up towards the highest planetary system, Satya Loka, which is Brahma Loka. And then there's the different levels of uh, worship, uh, worship of the Lord. On all these planets, the Lord is worshipped in different forms. But the main, and many of these planets are inhabited by sages and saints like that. But they also have tendencies for material happiness like that. There's always some tinge of material enjoyment. That's why they exist still within the material realm. And some of them, when they finish their sojourn on these higher planets, they actually work to worship the law, learn and devotion. But because there's so much material happiness, it becomes very difficult for them to elevate themselves to pure devotional service. So there are two, what we say, what's the word? Two defects that can permeate devotional service. Too much enjoyment and too, too little. In other words, if you don't have enough to eat, if you're always sickly, if you have so many problems just maintaining your body, it becomes quite difficult to perform devotional service. Therefore, that's a deficiency. And those who have too much materially, wealth, position, power, fame, prestige, followers, they also cannot seriously take the devotional service because it's mentioned. When you're drowning, and to be in this material world is a form of drowning because everyone is going down towards the ultimate end, then uh, if you have a crown on your head while you're in the water, then the, you'd go drown faster. So these are who have with all this material opulency, their tendency is to, re, to to don't see the importance of devotion to the Lord. And so they're always making plans to, to further their material happiness, or so-called happiness. So here, that's why Prabhupada does interject within one part of the purport after describing uh, the elevation to higher planetary systems, he says the devotional service begins with the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and side by side trying to understand Krishna in truth. So that is the one of the features that makes up devotional service is to try to understand Krishna. What is the nature of Krishna? What is his qualities? What are the nature of his relationships with his different types of devotees? how he relates to devotees, how he protects the devotees, how he supports the devotees, how he uh, interacts with his, uh, what we say, eternal associates, both in the material world and in the spiritual world. All these different mm, forms of knowledge make up the process of um, perfection, knowing Krishna. Because many, few people can know Krishna in full, but Krishna says, Manusanam Sahasreshu and Yatata Chari Kinchaya. What is that? Mm, let's see. I'll, I'll get the verse perfectly here. Uh -huh. Okay. Manusanam Sahasreshu. What is the next line? Kaschit Yatata Sid Yahaye Yatatam Abhisidhanam. Out of many thousands of Hmong men, one may endeavor for perfection. So out of thousands, one person tries for perfection. And of those who achieve perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. And then in the same chapter in 726, he says, uh, what is that verse? What is the first? I always forget the first line. Vedaham samatitani bhart O Arjuna, as the Supreme Personality of God, I know everything that has happened in the past. I know all that is happening in the present. 
and all things that are yet to come. So Krishna knows both past, present, and future. And then he says, I also know all living entities, but me, no one knows. <laughs> so to know Krishna is very rare, but we can know Krishna to some degree. As Srila Prabhupada was saying, uh, one time in one lecture he was sitting on his Vyasa sound speaking about how to be, how we have to become fully Krishna conscious. We have to become cent percent, Prabhupada would use that term, cent percent, which meant 100 percent Krishna conscious. And then the devotees were not so, they were looking at Prabhupada like, you know, this is impossible. So Prabhupada could, could detect the audience and he would say, all right, become 90% Krishna conscious. And then there was still the usual unhappiness. <laughs> so then he said, 80%. <laughs> and of course, nobody moved. Then he, then he said, 70% and no less, and he walked off. <laughs> so... I guess if you could become 70% Krishna conscious, that's considered to be perfection. <laughs> but the idea is to know, the more you know Krishna, the more you become Krishna conscious. So the whole idea of Krishna consciousness is try to try to know Krishna more and more through the process of serving Krishna and hearing about Krishna like that. It's not that we can simply study books because knowledge of Krishna comes through the Shastras, that's one medium, but through the heart and through the mind when the Lord is pleased with our devotional service. Yeah, anyone who pleases him in devotional service, he reveals himself to the devotee in different ways, and one gets an understanding of the nature of Krishna. And Krishna's, when you read and you get some understanding, you see how Krishna is so, how much he loves his devotees. This is really one of the features of Krishna. How much he cares for his devotees, how much he's always there for his devotees, how much he's much more there than we actually know. In fact, he's with his devotee every second, guiding the devotees, supporting the devotee, giving the devotees whatever they need, like that. So this is one of the features of Krishna's interaction, is that he, of course he loves all living entity, but he gives special treatment to his devotees. As he says, Samoham sababhuteshu name dvaisustina priya. What is the rest of the verse? Uh, yeah. The uh, I envy no one. I am not partial to anyone. What's the other one? I envy no one. I'm, I'm not partial to anyone. But anyone who renders the devotional service is a friend and is in me and I am in him. Mm -hmm. So Krishna is equal to everyone, but this Prabhupada would use the example of a, of a father who has many children in the family. His love for the children are equally dis distributed, but those who actually listen to the father, obey the father, and show affection to the father, he, he gives more time and more care. It's just natural. So Krishna, in the same way, uh, has special care for his devotees. He's always there uh, to help and guide his devotees. And the more we turn to him, we have to turn to him, and that's where we can receive our uh, the mercy that he is. He's willing to give to us. <clears throat> he's giving it anyway, but when we turn to it, we can actually receive it in a conscious way. <laughs> so here, so at this point is we should be trying to understand Krishna more and more. Others who perform some austerities, who also read the Vedas, who uh, perform some sacrifices. As it says here, they drink soma juice. And they say if you drink that, you can live for a long time. <laughs> it's complete, pure nectar. Comes from the ocean of milk. <laughs> it's a very sought-after beverage, and the demigods can drink it regularly. Soma re really refers to the moon. The moon god is called Soma. 
So there's so many heavenly delights that the Vedas and the scriptures mention. But the devotees, as promoted under Saraswati said, it's just an Akash Pushpayate, just a flower in the sky. In other words, it doesn't really, it's just, it's just a dream, forget it. <laughs> yeah, so we're not interested in a better material situation, but Prabhupada did say, he said, many of my disciples will attain heavenly planets. In other words, they will fall short of the perfection of stage, and therefore, because of their bhakti, they will be elevated to higher planets, but they won't get, they won't be able to go back home back to Godhead. So Prabhupada said that a few times, and that's quite, quite scary when you think about it. <laughs> like that. Because, what is that verse? Shinya punya vishanti marcha loka, what is it? That shinya punya vishanti, it's just like fuel in a vehicle. If you fill up your vehicle with uh, gas and then you drive, at some time you're going to run out. So in the same way, your pious activities run out in the heavenly planets and then uh, you fall again into the material world. You come back down here to again take up material activities. So that's also temporary as everything else. Brahma, Bhuvana, Loka, Purnya, Vritti. Everything in this material world is sub subjected to the, the miseries of the material energy. Although the miseries are mitigated in a higher planet, still there's dangers living there because there are constant, not constant, but occasional fights between the demons and the demigods, and the demigods also get killed in these fights. So, you know, there is always trying to protect the universe. <laughs> uh, what is that verse? Uh, Vishnu Bhakta Viparyayan Asura Vibhard. I can't remember that there's a constant battle between the asuras and the asuras, always for the, uh, you don't point your feet to the deities, yeah, that's it, and always cover it. Uh, there's that constant battle that goes on in all realms of the material existence between the asuras, and just on this planet now there's a battle going on, going on between the asuras and the asuras. The asuras are trying to lock us down. <laughs> And this, the suras are trying to unlock us out. <laughs> so yeah, it's, so this is what is going on. There's always a fight on some level. And of course, the demons now don't have much power, so they use political legislation and economic uh, manipulation to control people. So, but that fight is going on constantly like that. So, the, so there's no benefit to elevate yourself to any mid better material situation because it's temporary and it's still uh, not necessarily always going to be pleasant. There are also d dangers in any material situation. I mean, Lord Brahma demonstrated that even he, of course, Prabhupada said, he's just using himself as an example to show well, he was attracted to his own daughter, and because he was attracted to his own daughter, he had to give up his particular body, and his body became fog. So when there's fog outside, when you see, you know what fog is, right? Yeah. That means that the air is permeated with, uh, uh, with uh, lusty desires. <laughs> yeah. In other words, the mode of passion is very strong when fog is there. But then what kills the fog? The sun. When the sun comes out, the fog dissipates. And when the sun of Krishna consciousness comes out, then the fog of material sex life disappears. Because when, you, when you're blinded by sex life, you can't see. So fog, in fog you can't see either, right? <laughs> yeah. So sex life is a form of blinding where the living entity cannot see beyond the pleasures of sex and becomes oblivious or what we say ignorant to everything else. But then when the sun of Krishna consciousness comes then that destroys that fog-like condition and one can start to regain their natural vision again. <clears throat> okay, so these are a few of the points on this verse. Uh, but one should not be uh, 
enamored by this verse because Prabhupada ends the verse by saying one can satisfy his senses hundreds and thousands of times better than on this planet. Why did Prabhupada say that as the last verse, line in the verse? Usually when you end of when you end something, you end it on the point you want to make. Right? The last point is always the the summation of your point your previous points. So this is a temptation for those who want it. <laughs> That's all. There you go. I mean, but then of course you have to understand that that this is all you know, diverting our attention away from the real happiness which is devotional service or a relationship with Krishna. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada's just making a point for those who still have that inclination. All right, go ahead and try to enjoy. <laughs> and come back and tell us what it's like. <laughs> Which is not, you know, material enjoyment is like trying to catch smoke. You see smoke flying in the air and you go to grab it. Where is it? I see it. Missed again. <laughs> so that, yeah, so the material enjoyment is like trying to catch smoke. Smoke is seeable, mm -hmm. but when you try to grab it, you don't get anything. <laughs> so that's the, that's material life. It's just an, a phantasmagoria. It looks good from the outside, and people who are in it they have to convince themselves that they're happy. That's what it's like in material life. If you ask someone if they're happy, they won't tell you the truth because they're trying to convince themselves there are, even if they're miserable. So that's material life. You have to believe you're happy, otherwise you can't continue to go on. And some people actually come to the reality they're not happy. And then they become frustrated, suicidal, or become intoxicants. And they just drown their miseries in different forms of intoxication just to forget about their sufferings. And they, in other words, they add suffering to suffering by becoming intoxicated. So material life may look nice from the external point of view, but it's just, that is called maya. Maya means what is not. It means Maya exists. So when you take the definition what is not, it doesn't apply to the fact that it doesn't exist. It does exist, but it's not what it presents itself to be. The happiness that you're looking for within the Maya, the Maya realm is not there, although it gives you the idea that it is there. So that attracts the living entity. Oh, that girl looks so nice. And then you try to go after it, and then what do you get? And, you know, her husband shoots you, you know. <laughs> Something like that. Or she has some venereal disease, and then you're, you're in the hospital. <laughs> so, you know, it's always, or, you know, she looks good, but she, does, she has a terrible personality, so... <laughs> It's always something wrong, you know. <laughs> no matter how much you try to apply all these things. But people will take a little bit of pleasure for a lot of, and exchange a lot of suffering for a little bit of pleasure. They'll work hard just to get this little drop of pleasure called sex life. And then after that, they continue to work hard. And it's just an illusion, that's all. The idea of happiness in sex life is the idea of the illusion of happiness. That's all. It's built up to be this great, great thing that everyone should go after and enjoy as much as possible. But there's a thing called delicaladu. You know what delicaladu is? Delica. Delica. Delhi refers to Delhi in India, the city. Delica, ladu. There's no such thing as a delicaladu. 
But there is a verse that describes a delicate ladu. Prabhupada quotes it quite often. Those who have sex life don't want it, and those who don't have it want it. <laughs> delicate ladu. Those who have it don't want it, and those who don't want don't have it want it. <laughs> so if you don't have it, don't want it. <laughs> forewarned because those who have it they don't want it <laughs> so don't get don't get enamored by those who have it because they don't really want it they're suffering <laughs> okay so therefore our happiness is chanting Hare Krishna associating with devotees and performing the activities of devotional service, which goes directly to the soul and not just to the mind and to the senses where material enjoyment stops, but it goes right to the heart and awakens that, uh, that desire for unlimited happiness. Okay, any questions, comments, criticisms? Uh, abbreviations, distractions, additions, subtractions, ameliorations. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's make friends. <laughs> to ameliorate means to come together in a friendly way. <laughs> Mm, thank you, Maharaj. So I just remember the, that that was this incident when I think Krishna and Balaram, when they came to Mathura, um, there was this incident that, that Krishna first killed one guy because he was he was yeah, he was his washerman, a washerman. Yeah. and then when the next guy came, he, he was, was the flower garland man. Yeah. I think this one. Yes. Then Krishna said that. Um, he was so satisfied that he says to, to this guy, you will, you, you will have unlimited sense enjoyment in this life and in the end you will, go, you will come to me or something like this, I'm not sure. In so, other words, whatever, left, whatever was left of his life, he would have a happy life. You know, he wouldn't have any, any suffering in this life. And then he, so Krishna gave him a special benediction that he could live out the rest of his life in a happy way and then go back to Godhead. Yeah. But don't try for that unless Krishna gives it to you directly. <laughs> <laughs> that was I was thinking. <laughs> it's 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 something you have to you have to get directly from the uh, the owner. <laughs> but uh, but Krishna consciousness is nice life. And it's it's happy life. Generally. <laughs> <laughs> so when the prashadam is good, it is. But <laughs> don't be don't be attracted by the things of this world. They're all they're all meant to trip you up in devotional service. They have no substance. Substance comes with something that doesn't is not within the realm of time. Anything in the realm of time changes, and therefore it always becomes, it really starts to go down. <laughs> you marry a nice, beautiful girl, and after some time she looks ugly. <laughs> Sometimes they say when you get married, you know, and then you wake up the first night after sleeping together in the bed, and you look, and you look at, who's that? Who are you? I'm your wife. No. <laughs> you, you're so ugly. <laughs> Can't be the same one. <laughs> she didn't have, she doesn't have her makeup on, that's why. <laughs> so you know, it's all an illusion. All the happiness in this material world. I mean even even if someone is physically beauty. It simply indicates that there is some pious activity there. But those who are pious doesn't mean that those who will, you know, can uh, 
uh, actually be successful in life because material benedictions can lead to more and more sense gratification, that's all. Yeah. So material life is full of, a, full of attractions and it comes in different forms just to track your mind away. Because Maya knows, Maya knows where you're weak. It's like fighting in a, in a, in a boxing ring when you're fighting. When your opponent is, is fighting and he hits you in a certain place and there's some kind of injury or there's a cut, and then that area is more vulnerable. So he'll try for that same area again. So in the same way, when you are, you, you have, we all have some weaknesses that Maya can pick up on and she can pull you in that direction. So she knows those weaknesses. And she will hit you there or she will attack you there because this is where, and the reason why she does that so you can recognize it and become stronger and then protect yourself against that. She's actually helping you to become stronger by showing you where your weaknesses are. And it's also part of the process of purification too, to know where you are weak at. But don't, don't be illusioned by the, the dance of this material energy. It's only, it's, only a, a, it's only a light show, that's all it is. <laughs> There's no, just like flashing lights, when you, you might see a beautiful dance being done by flashing lights, but all it is is flashing lights, that's all it is. There's nothing behind it. So material life is just a bunch of illusions thrown at you just to somehow or other keep you connected to this material energy. The success is to just remember Krishna, that's all. It's by remembering Krishna more and more, and you, and you, Krishna shows you the illusions and protects you from the illusions at the same time. <laughs> Especially Lord Nisringadev. <laughs> yeah. He destroys material illusions, gives material protection, and uproots material desires. Anything else? Any other comments or questions? Oh yes, okay. What is your question? My question? Yeah, go ahead, okay. Yeah. Mm, no, I was just I was just thinking like so, somebody was thinking of a question and I heard the thought, so <laughs> uh, no I was just I was just thinking why what's this why was this guy so special that Krishna gave him this benediction because he doesn't say doesn't say in the in the commentary or, mm. and I was thinking why is he served Krishna so nice. he was humble he was really humble and he took the nicest flowers made Krishna a beautiful garland and uh, I think he offered some sandalwood paste too to Krishna his humility was really emphasized in that pastime. And he was so pleased to see Krishna. And just before that, the washerman, he was the opposite. He was arrogant and offensive to Krishna. And this person was just the opposite. So there might have been, just like the washerman, who was he in the previous life? He had committed an offense to Lord Ramachandra and therefore he had to take birth, he took birth in Krishna's Leela to get the reaction. Who was that, well, who was that person? When, uh, when Sita came back to Ram and then everything was back in Ayodhya, when all the devotees were again uh, united, uh, there was one 
person who was chastising his wife. And he said, you were out all night last night. I don't even know you where you are. And you're coming back to me. You have become unchaste. I'm not like Ram, who takes back his unchaste wife. So Ramachandra heard that. And then he was, that's when, when he heard that, he realized his reputation was tainted by this. So that's when he banned Sita. So that was the person who later became the washerman in Krishna Leela. And then, of course, he, he offended Krishna, and then Krishna cut off his head just by hitting him with his hand. But that's mentioned, yeah. Now, the garland maker, I think that he is also mentioned that he had done some previous bhakti and again had a chance to have the darshan of Krishna. So his progression in devotional service was not just that one time. It was something from the past. And it's also mentioned, I remember, in, when that pastime is narrated <coughs> by, um, by Jiva Goswami. <coughs> I could look it up and find out more about it. Hello? Yeah. When I was reading this pastime about uh, washerman, I was wondering, like, because uh, Krishna was accompanied with uh, Kohal boys, yeah. so how they were seeing this scene, they didn't know the background, so they're just passing by this washerman, okay, said that he was arrogant, but then he just killed him in front of his friends, so... Yeah. It's not strange for them. <laughs> Yeah. They were so like uh, for meek. Krishna when he kills somebody it's for their benefit. <laughs> yeah, so you know. Oh, you're thinking that the boys would not like that? Like, you know, they didn't know the background, they didn't know uh, and yeah. young. But they saw he was so arrogant. He he chastised Krishna. You want the clothes of the king? You should be, you know, you should be punished for that. He was really very, very uh, nasty to Krishna. Not just offensive, but just nasty offensive. offensive. And so, you know, he got a haircut. <laughs> His last haircut. <laughs> After that, he didn't need to shave up anymore. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just a bit off the top. Yeah. <laughs> All problems solved. <laughs> but anyone who's directly killed by Krishna is not, not an ordinary person. That's not easy to get, to get killed by Krishna. You have to really work hard to do that. <laughs> really. Devotees don't get that kind of mercy. <laughs> Yeah, really, because you know they're elevated. They don't they don't go down when they get killed by Krishna. Okay, so in about one minute, no, two minutes, the pujari will come out, smile at everybody, and then close the curtains. <laughs> Smiling pujari. Forty eight seconds more. <laughs> so, any, any final statements? We have Panchagranta there. Panchagranta instead of, and we have Panchatattva and Panchagranta. Well, they, they, they either go, they have two destinations. They either merge into the bodily effulgence of Krishna or into the body of Krishna. So one, if they merge into the body of Krishna, that's higher. If they merge into the bodily effulgence, that's called Sahuja Mukti. So just like Agasura, he was a demon that 
was killed by Krishna, but he got he got Sarupya Mukti, which was really rare rare for a demon to get. Because he remembered Krishna's form when he at the time of his death. <coughs> so Sahuja Mukti is one of the forms of liberation. It's impersonal liberation. Most demons get that. Putana, she got elevation on the level of Mother Yasoda. So she was really a very elevated form of liberation that she got. So Agasura and Putana really were two that really got elevation beyond the normal uh, elevation that demons usually get when Krishna kills them. But generally it's the two things, into the body of Krishna or into the bodily effulgence of Krishna. And then they enjoy transcendental happiness for some time, they can elevate themselves higher and, and take up bhakti, but if they don't take up bhakti, then they fall down again into the material world. Because any kind of uh, impersonal liberation is always temporary. Yeah, yeah, because anything that doesn't uh, and contain devotional service to the Lord is impersonal liberation. <laughs> Where's the Pajari? Come on, you're late. Come on out. Hey, Pujari. They're late. They're two minutes late. Okay, here he comes, right? Two minutes late on time. Okay. Panchatattva makam krishnam bhakta rupa sarupa kam bhakta avatar bhakta kyam namami bhakta shakti kam sri panchatattva ki jai. Yes, uh, Mr. G. Yeah, there's some connection there. Yeah, yeah, that nice. Yeah, that's right. His name was Sudama. <laughs> Yeah, there was something special about that personality <clears throat> beyond the fact that he, you know, he treated Krishna so nicely. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> thank you. God is gone, so we are going. Thank you. <laughs> Glory to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, ki jai. <laughs>